Pretty much any time you want to record in Reaper, you're going to want a timing source like a click track or a metronome. So in this video, we'll look at how you set those up. So in this video, we'll be looking at how to turn on the metronome, how to change its settings, how to set up pre-roll and count in, how to set up a dedicated track for click track, and some little tips and tricks along the way. This tutorial will be mostly for beginner users, but hopefully there's something for everyone in here. Here we are in Reaper. I have the default theme enabled, and other than a couple buttons different in my main toolbar, this should be pretty close to how you have it at home. The metronome in Reaper has a dedicated button on the main toolbar, so just go ahead and give that a left click, and when you hit spacebar, you should be able to hear a click. And if you want to change any settings, you can right click it, and it'll bring up a dedicated window with all sorts of settings. You can choose to have it running during playback or during recording. Um, so these are independent. You can have the click only when you press record or um, only when it's playing back or both, and both of them on is the default. We can change the, the volume of it. Um, we can give it a boost up to plus 12. We can change the beat pattern. There's different types of, of beats. Um, just go ahead and experiment with these. Uh, having on capital A, 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 A is going to be kind of the standard metronome click that you're probably used to hearing. Um, but if you did this like A, A, um, that would just be two strong hits. So I'll just leave it on the defaults for now. You can also load in samples to change the metronome sound, or you can change the kind of built-in synthesizer that it uses. So there's different types of synth sounds. Here's triangle. A lot of people don't like the sound of the Reaper click, and that's totally cool because it's really easy to change. With the primary beat sample box here, click on Browse, and then go to a folder that has any sort of short percussive sound. I actually have a pack of metronome samples that is included with my um, newsletter subscriber or my patron subscriber uh, bundle. And so there's a whole bunch of different uh, samples here that you can load in. I'm pretty fond of the marimba samples. Uh, these came from Pro Tools originally. I usually use these, so marimba 1 and marimba 2. So I just load those two. And so that sounds like this. It's just a stronger click sound. There's a lot of great other ones here. There's uh, the ones from Logic. I'll show you those. So if you come from another DAW, you can kind of have that familiar uh, click sound that you're used to. So the difference between count in and pre-roll is that count in will just run the click by itself, and pre-roll will run the click and your project for a certain number of measures and then start playing back or recording. So they're both really useful in different situations. You can use them both together if you want. I usually just use the pre-roll option personally. Um, but it's totally up to you however you want to use it. So that's the metronome using the built-in function. There's another method of setting this up, and that would be an item and track-based workflow. So we're going to add in a new track, and then from the Insert menu, I'll go to Click Source, and it'll put in this item. And this is a special item that is basically just the metronome. So we can drag this out for as long as our project is, and we'll play it back, and we just have that click sound. So that's totally independent of the metronome in the transport bar. So if I turn that off, I hit play, we still hear it. If we want to adjust this, we actually do this in a different way. So I right click and go to Source Properties, and this brings up the Quick Source Properties. This gives us options like having this an independent tempo from the project, uh, different volume for it different samples, and the, the whole um, click generator options here. If you set this up a certain way and you like how it sounds, you can click the Save as Default, and then in future projects, you'll have those same settings. Here, I've got the marimba samples as my defaults. So the cool thing is with this, if we only want this click to actually play in certain sections, so it's playing from bars one to five, and then it's going to skip five to six, and then 
go on from, uh, from seven on, you could do that just by editing the items. If you wanted the click to change speeds, it was actually playing twice as fast. Uh, we could set this to a play rate of two by double clicking to open source properties, changing play rate to two. And now this click source is going to increase in speed through these couple bars here. But that does not actually affect your project tempo. You're not inserting project uh, tempo markers or anything like that. So let's just hear this. So that's one way we can kind of get a quicker uh, click, which helps with faster parts where you're playing eighth notes or 16th notes. Um, so that's one really easy way to do that. You could also change the actual um, the pattern here if you wanted. By default, your project tempo is defined by what you have in the project settings. Project BPM is going to default to 120. If we change this to 130, that will change our project tempo. Project tempo can also be set through the BPM section of the transport bar here on my screen. And so if I set this to 150, you see that updates, the grid changes, and the click source changes. So now it's playing at 150. If we move this anywhere, we don't have to worry about it getting out of time, even if it's you know edited kind of off the grid or or slipped to off the grid, it's still going to play in time. So these these points aren't really like where the waveform is. It's still playing on these grid lines. And as well, it will follow any tempo marker changes we put in here. So if we have two bars of um, 150 and I put in a, a tempo marker here, I could set this to 120 after that. So I'm gonna put in a tempo marker for 120 at bar three, and then I'll put in another tempo marker um, once you have one tempo marker here, you can just enter it into the BPM section of the transport bar. So let's uh, go down to 90. So two bars of 150, two bars of 120, and then 90 from then on. And you can see in the waveform here um, in the click source that that's actually reflected there. And so it's that easy to add in tempo markers and have your click track automatically follow that. So besides the options of being able to change the sounds or the, the, the speed that it plays back or muting it in different sections, having it on its dedicated track has a few more options uh, that are really useful. Um, well, since it's on a separate track, you have the full effects chain, you have automation, you have volume control, uh, you have the full routing options through Reaper's Mixer. So if you wanted to make this um, extra loud, you have your volume control, you have the effects chain, so you can put it on a compressor if you needed to. If you needed more complex routing where you need to send different levels to different performers, so your guitar player wants a little bit of click while your drummer needs lots of click, you can set that up really easily from one track using sends uh, to the hardware or out to another track to set this up. But um, that's kind of beyond the scope of what I wanted to show you here today. If you have the SWS extension installed, there's a couple interesting options you might really like if you are interested in using that click track workflow. So you're gonna open up the action list. If you type in SWS and click, C-L-I-C-K, an action to insert the click track. So all that does is insert a track named click with a click source item going for about 10 minutes, it looks like. And so that's automatically gonna follow your tempo and all the, those sorts of things. And it's going to use your default setting for uh, your click source settings. The other really cool thing is that there's a dedicated option for toggling the click track mute. So just like the uh, metronome can be enabled and disabled from the main toolbar, you could have an action or even a toolbar button that turns on and off this track, which is really, really helpful. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Hope this has been really helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.